Hello there guys, good to see you again. Now today, I wanna to do a video talking about things that I bring with me when I go on my field trips that I couldn't do without regarding my nightscape photography. Before I get onto that though, I tend to drive around a lot, as you already know, searching for nightscape locations to shoot, maybe down the track, and I've just found this awesome old mine site. Now, as you can see there in the background, look at it, fantastic. Now, it's now October, so the Milky Way core is over that side of the sky. Now, for this particular composition, I've got a fair bit of open sky facing over there towards the east, and that would be just perfect to shoot this, because the Milky Way core early in the season is gonna come down over the top of this uh, structure. And so I'm gonna come back here. And you know, even though my mission today is not really to shoot anything here, I can come to places like this as I drive around and just seek out new locations I can jot down in my book for later on. Put in my memory banks, chuck in the GPS in the car, and I'm ready to go. So I'll just have a bit of a look around here and we'll get on to the topic of this video. Now, as I mentioned in the intro to this video, well, this video is all about various tools that I use to make my job a lot easier for shooting nightscapes. And the number one tool is my phone. Now, you might think, well, what do you do with your phone? Well, there's a lot of things, but firstly, obviously um, there's apps. So photo pills is a big help when it comes to planning. Now, particularly when I'm out here in the daytime trying to work out my compositions in relation to where the night sky is. Now, I just showed you before that this uh, location here lines up beautifully with the eastern sky. I can know exactly with photo pills. The other thing that I can do with my phone, I can have a compass on here. And I also know that by using the coordinates laid out in Stellarium, which is another program uh, which I use to work out where things are in the night sky, I can work out the exact compass bearing and again, work out exactly where anything is in the night sky. And then from there, I can just work out where I need to line up my foreground to line up with the night sky. Fairly simple, uh, and I use it all the time. And what it does, it means that I can come out to places like this in broad daylight. It can be cloudy, it can be sunshine, it can be rainy, it doesn't matter, because I know these things don't lie. The good thing about things like uh, the Milky Way core, for example, or any other constellation, is that they always rise up and move across the sky in exactly the same places every year, year after year. So having these apps with me in my pocket, doesn't matter where I am, I can work out where these things are gonna happen. Now, if you've watched this channel at all over the years, you will know that I talk often about using my GPS, which is built into the car, to enter into locations such as this so that I can come back at any time. And I've got dozens and dozens of locations entered into my GPS. So I guess it comes down to the fact that you just gotta make sure that when you enter a location into your GPS, that it makes sense for you. In other words, I could put old mine ruin into my GPS, but where is it? I mean, I have to put a bit more detail on that. For example, the town it's in or whatever, because I've been traveling all around the place. And um, pretty much I always travel in my car to the locations I'm going to. So it's all at my fingertips. And all I need to do is punch it in, middle of the night, it doesn't matter what weather conditions I've got, I can always get back to that location. Some are harder to find than others. I can tell you right now, if you're trying to find some tree as in a paddock somewhere that you've located during the daytime, when you get back there at night time, it is a lot harder to actually find. That's where this baby comes in really handy. Okay, so it may seem a little bit odd that in a video talking about gear that I require to shoot nightscape photography, that I'd mention my car. 
let's face it, we all have to get to our locations. We have to know uh, how to negotiate the terrain and everything else. And this car is absolutely awesome. Now, as you know, if you followed my series, particularly down in Tasmania recently, you'll know that I actually slept in the car. So the car was everything to me. It was my home. It was my method of transport. It was my storage facility. I've, I've put roof racks and all sorts of things on there so that I can make my job easier. And that's what this video is all about, making the whole adventure of nightscape photography just that much easier to perform. Let's face it, it's not easy. Getting out there, shooting the stars under the night sky is not an easy thing to do. So this car makes it easier for me. Look, even things like having the, the uh, driving lights on the front here, having the, the rhubarb, I'll tell you what, there are kangaroos everywhere at nighttime here in Australia. And I feel a lot safer driving around in this car with that on than if I had a car that didn't have it. I have had to use it a few times, but we're not gonna talk about that. Anyway, the car, fantastic piece of machinery. And I think whatever car you drive, make sure it's user friendly for the things that you wanna do as far as your photography is concerned. Now, as you know, I'm always a pretty big sucker for a tree. And just in my wandering around here at the lake, I've discovered this tree not too far from the water's edge. I reckon it could make a pretty good nightscape image. Why? Well, because it's facing in the west here with the lake in the background. Uh, at the moment, it's really windy, blustery, not great conditions for photography at all. Um, but hopefully later on tonight, I might be able to get something when the wind drops down, as long as the sky is clear. If so, I think it could be okay. And of course, this is one of the reasons I drive around. I've been here heaps of times. Now, I wanna reiterate this fact. I've been here plenty of times before, and yet I've never actually walked past this tree. There's always a new thing to shoot even at locations that you visit a lot. So, tick that one off, it's in my memory now. I'll come back here later and see what I can get. All right, so as you know, this video is all about things that I consider to be essential to help us with our nightscape photography. Well, next on my agenda, something to eat. I've got my extra large esky here with all sorts of goodies in here. You know, when you're out there shooting the night sky and landscape, day or night as far as I'm concerned, I've got to keep my sustenance levels up. And I think coming to a place like this, I'm at this gorgeous lake and I'm overlooking the lake. You know, it's not just about feeding my, my physical body. It's all about feeding my inner self as well. When I'm sitting here on this bench over here, overlooking this gorgeous lake, you know, I'm eating the odd rum ball or something like that as well. I'll tell you what, there is no better place to be. It's, it's I guess, feeding my, my creative energy. And I talk about creative energy a lot. You know that. Creative energy is something you have to keep working on. Otherwise, you won't even get out of bed to come out here and shoot the night sky. All right. Let's get into this. All right, so what have I got here? Well, firstly, I've got my esky for a cup of tea. Can't beat that. I have to confess, on the way here, I stopped off at my favorite bakery and bought a salad roll. Now, have a look at that. Tell you what, this is gonna fill me up for the rest of the day, no worries about that. But I do have a few other sneaky bits and pieces in here. A couple of bickies in there. And uh, I don't know, a pear, an apple, a healthy snack bar. Uh, I'll, I'll see if I can fit that one in later on as well. All right, let's get into it.
Well, I very much enjoyed my lunch and I've decided to go for a little walk along the edge of the water here. And lo and behold, I've come across this gorgeous little gum tree sticking out of the side of the hill. The water's down here in front of me. Now, I fully realize that this video is actually about another topic completely. It's not about searching locations, but I cannot resist myself. I mean, I'm here and I've seen this tree. I've never photographed this tree before, but it's in a perfect orientation facing up there towards the western sky with the Milky Way stretching right across there. So the weather is improving. So I reckon it might be just right for a shoot here tonight. What do you reckon? Okay, well I've talked a lot about various pieces of equipment and big stuff like the car, etc. But now I just want to get into the nitty gritty of some of the actual basic camera gear that I really can't live without when I'm out here on location shooting the night sky and landscape. So let's get into it. So the first piece of equipment that is a must have in my opinion is a good camera body. Now that's pretty obvious. I'm using the Nikon Z6. Now this is the Z6 Mark II, which has a few significant upgrades on the original Z6, but it doesn't matter whether you shoot Canon, Sony, or any other brand, uh, they're all fantastic, especially the new mirrorless models, but I really love this Z6. Now, one of the things I could not live without is a flip screen. Now this particular camera, only flips in a vertical plane like that. It doesn't flip fully articulating around like my, well, my Sony a7S III does, which I'm videoing on now, and I couldn't do without that on a video camera. But in this case, look, that is fantastic because I can get the tripod right down low and still be able to see the screen. Unless I go into portrait orientation, that becomes a little bit more problematic and that's where the fully articulating screen comes into its own. I know the new Canons uh, have that and I think that's a big advantage that they have, but nevertheless, love this body. The other thing is, is a good wide angle or semi wide angle lens. Now I'm, as you know, in love with the 20 millimeter focal length. So that's what this is. Nikon 20 mil f 1.8. This is the original Z mount and I could not live without this lens. Probably I would say 90 to 95% of all my images that I shoot are done with this very lens. So, I mean, that speaks for itself as far as I'm concerned. So that, that's pretty obvious, no worries about that. Um, a few other things. Now for me, I do a lot of light painting, so I need something that's a reliable torch or flashlight. This is only a small, um, about a 300, lumen light and that's all you need. This is a LED lens P7.2 and I think uh, I've been using this for years and years, never let me down. Uh, they have rechargeable versions, they also have battery versions. This is the battery so it takes AAA batteries but it lasts quite a long time. Now before I go on there's bugs everywhere here and that reminds me of another vital piece of equipment, bug spray. Now at this time of year we're coming 
uh, it's October. So here in the Southern Hemisphere, it's springtime. Bugs, they're everywhere. Now I'm around water. I'm, I'm always very wary because not only are there mosquitoes around, potentially, uh, blowflies like you just heard there, but there could also be midges and all sorts of other creepy crawlies. And uh, I, I need to keep that very close at hand. Speaking of torches, this is one that I've showed you before. This is a really strong, heavy duty, thousand lumen torch. Now I use this not so much for light painting because it's too bright for that, but I do like to use it um, just to light up the large areas so I can frame up images in the dark. I can actually put the uh, light beam onto uh, the subject and focus and things like that really, really handy. And not only that, just walking around at nighttime, very, very handy piece of equipment to have. Okay, so this is my headlamp. This is a LED Lenser MH5. It's actually really good. Now I've had various headlamp torches before. Um, haven't really liked them because they've been too bulky and heavy. And the other thing is <laughs> they have too many uh, modes. I mean, in other words, they, they flash and they carry on and there's all sorts of colored lights attached. This is really simple. It's one that I like because of its simplicity. Small, compact design, it has a rechargeable battery. It only has uh, a high, low, and off. Well, I think it's low, high, and off, but anyway, that's all it has. No flashing strobing or anything like that. It hasn't got any red lights or green lights or blue lights. I hate all that stuff. I just like a good light that I can see. Um, use both hands when I'm using my camera, just around to um, you know work with my with my compositions and gear and everything else. Now, a lot of people are gonna to say to me, oh, you've gotta have a red head torch. Well, I can tell you one thing, I don't like red head torches. I don't like red color at all. Now, please understand me. I'm not talking about where I'm working with groups of other people and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to, to say that the red light isn't a, 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 an advantage in certain circumstances, particularly in, in uh, trying to maintain your night vision when you're using long focal length lenses like telescopes or long lenses. I don't use those. Oh, I really am more important in seeing what's around me. I want to see the thing that I'm lighting up. I want to be able to see the camera. And I'm, most of the time I'm working all by myself. If I have anyone with me, of course, I'm careful not to shine the light. The other thing is with red light, and I found this with car uh, tail lights and, uh, and certainly red headlamps, it, it really destroys a photograph. The red is very invasive light as opposed to a white light. Now I get what you're gonna say. Some of you will say talking about wrecking your night vision. I don't need night vision to be able to see what I'm shooting at nighttime out here. The stars here where I live, they're as bright as, as anything. Sure, I will have better night vision when all the lights are out. There's no doubt about that. But for me to compose my light painting and everything else, I need a good torch. I need to be able to see what I'm doing. I'm not just sitting here in an, in an observatory pointing a telescope out the roof. That's not what I'm doing. All right, what else have I got here? Oh, th this is another thing. This is a lens warmer. Now, I've, I've spoken about lens warmers in the past, um, and there's no doubt that I've made the mistake of not applying lens warmers to my lenses um, in the past, and I've had to suffer the consequences of that. So I've had lenses fogging up. Now, it doesn't have to be really cold for this to happen. It just has to be um, depending on what the dew point is. So the level of the frost and what, whatever comes down. And uh, tonight, well, at the moment, it's, it's pretty warm. It's about 17 degrees Celsius. So, um, but I know later on when I get out to shoot tonight, it's, it's gonna get down a lot lower than that, especially around water, uh, has, a, has a, a tendency to fog up a bit more. So, so I always have these on hand. Now, the other thing that is vital for me is a wireless remote trigger. You can see I, I always use these Yong Nuo RF603s. They're getting quite old now, and they've been on the market for years and years and years, but I still use them faithfully because, go away, blow flies. I still use them faithfully because they're still working fantastically for me. And I, I, I've got these ones, I just throw them in the bag, you can see this is the one I connect up to the camera. They also have the, the hot shoe mount so I can put a flash on if I want to. Uh, and I do actually trigger my flashes using these as well. So I only have to have one of these in my pocket. It'll trigger the flash and the camera at the same time. 
So uh, I find them extremely reliable. The other thing is they've only got one button on the side and the actual button that you press. There's no programming, there's no digital readouts, there's nothing like that. They're just basic and they work up to, I reckon probably about 50 or 60 meters from the camera. So I love using these. Now, of course, I think uh, everyone would um, agree with me on this. You've got to have spare batteries. Now I've got a number of them here and I've always make sure that I've got a fully charged at least one, but I usually have about three or four batteries with me because there's nothing worse than getting out and finding you've got a flat battery and you don't have any more or you've only got a little bit left on your battery. That is no good, we all know that. So um, make sure they're charged. It's no good bringing batteries out that are only a quarter charged or something like that. So I guess that comes to the, the point I would like to make about preparation. You need to be prepared before you get out here on location. I mean, I'm, a, I'm over an hour's drive from home here. So there's not much point in me having uh, gear here that doesn't work. I've got to make sure it's all ready to go. Uh, look, I know we've all been there and there's no doubt will be there again one day but you know this is what this video is all about to try and give you guys a bit of preparation and a look into my world to see what I go out with and what I wouldn't want to leave at home. Speaking about not leaving at home especially in a place like this is some boots. Now I've got my shoes on which are pretty waterproof but walking around in the dark it's really easy at these um, lake or water locations to get your feet wet and the last thing you want to do is be standing in wet socks and wet shoes all the way home in the car so I've got my boots which I put on when I get out uh, to shoot at night time and then if I accidentally step into the water well these are waterproof up to about there but I can just take them off and put my dry ones back on so I think that's always a pretty good idea to have don't you now you might think it's a little bit overkill but I always bring a spare tripod in fact sometimes I have about two or three spare tripods in the car you just never know when something could go wrong with your number one tripod. And so these are the most expensive tripods in the world, but they're always ready to go. Now, I tend to always use a Manfrotto ball head mount so that all of my cameras have the same fittings. So all I need to do is clip it on there and they're all ready set to go. It doesn't matter whether I'm doing video stuff or whether I'm doing still images, I just use the same tripods. But something cheap like this, I'll tell you what, it doesn't cost a lot, but it's a really good backup to have in the car. And along the same lines as that, uh, these cheap light stands, you can see it there. I use these for things like low level lighting. So they're just on eBay, didn't spend very much at all. I can uh, put a light, uh, like an LED light panel on there, or I can put a flash on there. And these are, look, I've had them for years and they're still going strong. I've never broken any of these. So you don't have to spend top dollar when you're looking at things like uh, light stands or backup tripods. And of course, there's no way I could talk about light stands without talking about these absolutely fabulous light panels. These, this is a Z96 video light. Uh, here's another one here, which you can see. Now, it's, it's got 96 LED panels. It doesn't matter. You can have all sorts of different amounts of LEDs. It's more about dependability and reliability. These are fantastic. Now, these use a Sony NPF battery. You can see that's a fairly large one there. And to be absolutely honest with you, I cannot remember the last time I actually charged the battery on this. That's how long they last, weeks and weeks and weeks. So set them up on the light stand here. I've had these lights for probably six or seven years and they're still going as strong as the day that I had them. I've had them left out in the rain. I've had them left out all night, on all night, because I've forgotten to bring them back in. Still going bright in the morning, no problem at all. Frost all over them. They just keep going forever. There are other panels. Let me show you. I've got a couple here, which I've been using. This is the Yong Nuo brand. Um, quite a good panel, color changeable. These are not color changeable. They have the, the gel magnetic strip that goes on the front, which is okay. I'm used to it, uh, but I do like the fact that you can color change these. So that's a little panel. That's pretty much the same as a Loom Cube um, panel, but about half the price. And this is a, a little one that I've just got hold of, which is a fantastic little light. It's a Ulanzi brand. 
VL49 RGB. So you can get any color you want out of this. And it's actually surprisingly quite a good little light. And I use it a bit for my videos at night, just to give me a little bit of video light out in the field. So these are new ones, much newer technologies than this one, uh, but, but this one's far tougher. And I'd be happy to leave this out all night. These two, I'd be a bit more careful of doing so. They're a bit more delicate. And so there you go. That gives you a little bit of an insight into the pieces of equipment and the things that I think are pretty much non-negotiable about bringing out with me on a night shoot. Of course, there's plenty of other things that I haven't mentioned. I haven't talked about camera bags or clothing or anything like that. But of course, it goes without saying that you bring your stuff in, in a decent bag and you rug up for the conditions. So speaking of conditions, it's nice and sunny at the moment. There's a bit of cloud cover around, but I'm looking forward to seeing what I can capture around the Lake District here tonight. So hopefully I'm going to show you some images now. And uh, other than that, I'll look forward to catching you guys later. Thank you so much for tuning in once again. I hope you got something out of this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Have a fantastic week. I'll see you then. Thank you.